Hey, God bless you guys. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments in the past couple of days from people who are feeling unworthy, who feel unsure about their salvation. So I'm making this video to encourage those people. You know, doubt is a funny thing. The enemy will sow seeds of doubt all throughout those places in you that he has access to. You know, the primary place that the enemy has access to is the carnal mind. The body says that, I'm sorry, not the body, the Bible says that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. That means that it is opposed to God. And, it, and the Bible says it will never be subjected to to God and, and that it doesn't understand the things of God. So what I've found in my life is, is the problem with doubt comes when I start to think in the carnal. The word says that you're also given the mind of Christ. So so then you have two minds and you can choose which one to use. You can use the carnal mind or you can use the mind of Christ, the mind of the spirit. All the um, dysfunction that I see in the church, the arguing over doctrine and, and the unbelief, the seeds of doubt, the religiosity, people trying to work their way into God's favor. You know that stuff? When I see it, I notice that it's coming from the carnal mind. When you're in the spirit, when you're in that mind of Christ, there's no dysfunction in the body. There's, there's only unity with God. There's no doubt. All the faith that you need is in the spirit. When I go to pray for someone for healing, I, I try not to think because there's too much doubt in the mind. So a little trick that I use is I, I command the healing, you know, I command whatever it is in their body to be healed. And then I, I think about Spanish words for colors to keep my mind busy so that I won't think about it. And then, and then the faith that is contained in the spirit, it arises and the Holy Spirit does all the work. There's no, there's no work per se that we ourselves, independent of the spirit, need to do. All the work of sanctification has to come from the Spirit. Our job is only to let, to abide. In John 15, Jesus says that you can bear no fruit unless you abide in Him. That He's the vine and you're the branch. That you need to abide in Him and He'll abide in you. Someone pointed out to me that the, the, the word bear in that passage in the Greek is not to produce, but to carry. Because it's Christ who produces the fruit. We're not capable. Our job is just to carry that fruit. Right? So, so I believe it's in Isaiah where, where God says that our, our good deeds are, are just filthy rags. Because no matter what good you think you could do, it, compared to a holy and perfect God, 
it's it's just trash but the spirit the Holy Spirit can produce good in you if you abide in Christ and you just let the Holy Spirit move you will produce you will fruit will be produced from you not of your doing but but of God's doing and then you can just carry that fruit and it's not a, it's no work there's no work involved it's just simply abiding in a relationship that's ultimately what God wants from you he just wants you to be in a relationship with him he knows that you're going to take some work he wants to clean you up he wants to bring you to a place of of perfection and and forgiveness and all those things that that you're desiring he wants to do those things in you right our job our job is to get out of the way get out of his way we have to let go of our pride we have to stop trying to earn his favor we have to believe what he says about us he calls us the righteousness of god he calls us sons and daughters he calls us friends not believing those things is just as full of pride as if we believe that we're more than what we are we are exactly what he says we are but that has to be you have to exercise a certain amount of faith and that faith doesn't exist in you it exists in the spirit in you i mean it doesn't exist in the carnal you it doesn't exist in the mind that you've learned to use all your life it exists in the spirit so the more you abide in the spirit the more you'll believe those things the more you believe those things the more they'll come true believe that the lord is faithful and that he is faithful to complete the work that he starts in you believe that he's going to complete the work your salvation is not secured by you doing your sec- your salvation was secured by him doing jesus died from you he rose from the dead and your salvation merely depends on you believing that fact the sanctification the process of sanctification that's going to come from the spirit from the holy spirit living and dwelling within you it's going to come from you allowing it from you abiding in him and he does all the work so I get comments like I'm scared because I haven't forgiven. Or I'm having trouble forgiving someone. That ability to forgive doesn't exist within you yourself. It exists within the mind of Christ and within the Holy Spirit. Your job is merely to choose to forgive and allow him to do the rest. Sanctification is a process. just have faith that he'll do it and then he will too many of us um get tied up in this idea of doing and what we really need to focus on is the idea of letting of allowing of surrendering that's where the power lives it's in that place of surrender Every other religion in the world is rooted in doing. It's rooted in a place of pride, believing that you can earn something. Only Christianity is rooted in the idea that you can't that the most you can do is to surrender to God and say I can't do it on my own. I want you to do it in me. I want you to change me. So
So don't let the enemy attack you that way. Don't let him sow those seeds of doubt in you. Believe what he says about you. You know, the Israelites in the original Passover, when they were to put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts so that the angel of death would pass over them, who was that blood of the lamb for? It wasn't for the Israelites because it was on the outside of their door. It was for the angel of death to see. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is upon us. And that's what God sees when he looks at us. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that God loves you. No matter what you've done in your life. He loves you. He's your dad. And he wants to do a work in you. He wants to bring you to that place of sanctification. You just have to allow him to do it. Don't get in the way by beating yourself up, by trying to do. Just let, abide. Okay? That's all I want to tell you. So, um, God bless you. And, uh, I'll be praying for you.